Previously on Sailing Terrapin, we had a great passage from Bonaire up through Haiti through the Windward Passage to the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. his first time back in the Bahamas for a couple years. decompressing for a few days in Little Harbor, it was time to move north, get Wi-Fi, check email, and ease back into reality. Uh, so we just left Little Harbor on Long Island in the Bahamas, went through the cut, and um, rain just stopped, so we have lots of mosquitoes, and uh, we're on our way to Clarence Town. Uh, check Wi-Fi for the first time in two and a half weeks. As cruising sailors, you often find yourself leaving anchorages and the friends you made along the way. But the flip side is also true. Sometimes you pull into an anchorage and you might see a friend that you once saw in Ireland, for example. Hello. Those were our friends, as you heard, who we last saw in Kinsale, Ireland. Lars and Suzanne are on a boat named Seawind from Sweden, who, after they left Clarence Town, made their way south through Brazil to Ushuaia, Argentina, where they spent the COVID pandemic exploring Patagonia. With a good set on the hook and beautiful water and a beautiful blue sky, it was time to go explore Salt Key in Clarence Town. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what 
Five sailboats, I don't know if they'll show up. Anchored over there in that small little island, little bay. Beautiful day. Got another sailboat going in. We're blasting along here. Pretty nice, about 7.4 knots. Had a really nice day. Blue water, tur turquoise sky. And we're gonna take a look up front. Just the two of us, and we can stay up all night. Kissing under street lights. Doing what we want to. Doing what we need to do. Staying up all night. Everything is alright. Oh, I wanna be with you. Oh, I wanna be with you. Let me be the sun. a.m. and sun just came up and we are sailing to the berries to uh, Great Harbor Key uh, because we found out last night that our plan to go to West Palm uh, and arrive tomorrow morning would have squalls, wind on the nose, and 
current against us, the triple whammy. So instead we decided to go anchor in the Bahamas. Not a bad option. And um, it's a pretty morning, a little shallow water, um, but we found some eights and nines in there that might be all right. So we'll manage through and uh, should be a nice day. This is the cruise ship's private island. So if you go on a cruise, that's where you're going. If they say, go to our private island, that's it. So these are the cruise ship's um, private keys that they take people to and say, you're on a private island in the Bahamas. And they have a water park on the beach in the Bahamas. So people pay money to go to a water park on a beach. There's another island and cruise ship. And that cruise line owns that island and that cruise line owns that island. And we're gonna go around the back of all. Harry Islands at Great Harbor Key. Um, as a front passes off the US East Coast, and as it does, it also affects the uh, Northern Bahamas where we are in the Berry Islands. So we're anchored and uh, the wind is clocking around to the northwest. So right now we have pretty good swell with very little protection. Um, there's a couple other boats anchored here. And hopefully this will uh, clock around pretty fast in the next couple hours. Thankfully uh, we have a good rock now holding us, knock on wood. And uh, there could be squalls associated with the wind clocking. Hopefully uh, they pass by us. Acknowledge for K video instead of whatever. Would you like to give an update? Um, not really. You look pretty cute. Sailed from the Bahamas. It's rolling, not much wind. Had to motor a lot against the current. And now we're going to the Palm Beach. Um, hoping to anchor and then they're going to check into customs and get cell phones, which we haven't had in two years. And then get ready to hunker down for a big weather event. Expecting 40 to 50 knot gusts. Yay! Yay! But we do have a beautiful sunrise. And traffic coming in the sunrise. There's West Palm.
How was that, Cap Molly? <laughs> St. Augustine Inlet can be kind of tricky. It's pretty shallow and there can be shoaling on each side of the marker, so you just really have to watch your depths as you're going in. Terrapin's draft is six feet and we should have enough water to get in, but we always like to have a lookout every time we go into this inlet. We called St. Augustine Marina on the VHF and they gave us a mooring assignment, which was great. It's always nice to have one ready when you're ready for it. We motored through the mooring field, found our mooring number, and were all tied up, ready to go, when we realized how close we were to town. And sometimes, town can be kind of loud. So we called the marina again, asked for a new assignment, and then found our way back through the Bridge of Lions to the other side of the mooring field, and then tied up again. Baxter, Kella, and I love St. Augustine. It was great to be here. So being one of the first places that we were back in the U.S., it was time to go explore. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright
devant 